little things that annoy me. And one of these things is the Unifilter kit for the KTM 1190. It comes in two parts. You've got the um, main filter, which replaces it. Then you've got that foam, which seals the airbox. And then you've got the snorkels. This thing. Why does it annoy me? That. It's twin. Yeah. This is the second time this thing has failed. First time, same thing happened again. The dealer was nice enough to replace these because it was within one year of purchase. Well, the bike wasn't even one year old. And this is... Look, the bike was serviced 2,000 kilometers ago. I thought, next trip is coming up. Let's have a look. This is what I found. This one's usable barely, I suppose. You cut that off and use more of the foam. This one I'd have to glue together. But is it really necessary? You know... These things aren't cheap. And if you look on the websites, they tout these as the ultimate. Wait, wait, wait. The Touratech research and development team used the Unifilter in all the races in the 2006 season and since then have found no dust residue inside the air filter box. Another advantage of the filter. It's made of high-tech foam. It has the longest service life. You do not throw this away. You just rinse it out, lubricate it, and use it time and time again. Really? I would have thought this one resembles more like a condom. You use it once and then you've completely disposed of it. Fuck washing it. Kids, don't wash the condoms. They never get clean and don't turn them inside out. No, I'm not speaking from experience. Okay. Regardless, look, what is the purpose of this filter? To trap dust. I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much. So it has to trap dust. A pre-filter. Yeah, congratulations for figuring that out. And how difficult is it? It can't be that difficult. And that's why... What you're looking at is polyester um, foam, no, um, material, let's call it material, slate, can't think right. Okay, we use this at the workplace to trap dust uh, in excess of 40 microns. Now, usually it's quite thick much like a centimeter uh, thick, but it comes in layers. So whoever manufactures basically layers it on and makes a roll. So it was easy enough to peel. How many layers are these? Uh, I think, actually only two, I would say. There's one hard layer and a foam layer or a softer layer on top. And I'm going to make a snorkel sock out of this and see if it performs better. How am I going to do this? Well, I've already cut it out, so now I just need to twist it around, glue it, hold it together with duct tape, and then use filter oil, WD-40 or equivalent. Heck, even 10W-40 oil will work here. And let's see if this works. Because remember, big particles, big dust particles, they've got enough force behind them, so they fly in a straight line. So they will hit the filter directly. And you don't need a lot of material to stop these. The big concern is the finer particles. Because finer particles don't have enough mass, or how do we say, uh, let's put it this way. The wind blows the particle, and the particle will follow the wind. Where the bigger particle has got more mass and will travel rather in a straight line with the force and kinetic energy. If this sounds complicated, don't worry, I'm talking out of my ass. So... The point is, it doesn't need a lot of material. You're just trying to filter most of the gunk out. So the fine particles, if you put oil here, there is a good chance that it will bounce against the oil, get stuck like that. Well, 
that's how KNN bases their filters in. And the big particles will just shoot against it, also get stuck in the oil, yada yada yada, etc. So, let's see if it works. That's going to be my little DIY project tomorrow. Oh, one last thing, when I removed these and took the bike for a ride, <sighs> holy hell, I forgot how much horsepower these things rob. Man, I put her in street mode and I got the disco light of traction control in every sh uh, shift change. Which was fun. <laughs> yeah, so... Let's see if I can replace Cthulhu's phallic... Um, yeah, brain not working today. To be updated. There we go. The sock that ripped open is being patched using clothes pegs and Patex glue. This stuff fixes and sticks pretty much everything, except your broken marriage. So give this thing half an hour to cure and then install, oil be done. And here we go. Cheap and cheerful solution, a sock replacement. Hasn't oiled, so let's take this out. Uh, Ta-da! It's a long one too. What she said. Only drawback is with this material, it's not as stretchy, so you just have to go a couple of millimeters extra on top here. But it fits easily enough. So, that's uh, a good length. No chance that this will, how do you say, get sucked into the engine or in front of the filter, and if it does, who gives a car? So, I've made one of these. Uh, upcoming Namibia trip. Let's see how well this thing filters. I'm going to put the remaining sock, the one in the best condition, on the other side. And phew, let's see if it's a fair contest. If that one clogs first, and this one catches everything, who knows. So, I'm going to oil clean them and oil them up with some Moto, what I have left over from my KLR days. And then, sure, let's see. Right, I did clean her before, so I'm not trying to do anything here, but that's about as the kind of dirt I rode through. It's been 1800 kilometers since I fitted the snorkel. Now I left the original, both of them clean, in the bike. So, after 1800, let's have a look at the uni filter. That's pretty bad. <laughs> that is actually quite bad. It's even coming out the one side. Okay, now my homemade device. You know what? It looks pretty similar. I'm just think, how is it? It basically lies like this. Boom. There. So, it caught quite a bit. Or, well, we'll have to look at the main filter. But, as a first attempt, I'm happy. In fact, I would say that I went overboard with the length. She looks more like most of the filtration happened up to here. Which is possible, because that's where the gauze comes in. Hmm. You know what? Maybe one more prototype, and yeah, I think I've got a solution here. And the best thing is, it's not as frayed or damaged as this one. It lasts longer. And let's not forget, this is not supposed to be an air filter, it's a pre-filter. Just to get most of the gunk out to save the main filter. Because let's face it, these new bikes get only service 20,000 kilometers now. No, wait, 15,000. Sorry. 20,000 is a miracle. So, we'll have a look at the main filter. I'm currently disassembling her because I had a bit of a crash. Didn't make it to Namibia. What happened? Well, going 80, 90 on sand roads. Hit two ditches full of sand. The first one launched my backside up. The other one stopped the front wheel. 
and caused me to do a 180. I landed hard, all the crash bars basically bent into it, and I gotta say, if the rum bucks weren't there, that would have been it. The OEM crash bars would not have helped at all. They would have crumpled and damaged everything. So, well done rum bucks. I've already ordered a new pair. What else? Well, And another reason why I'm disassembling her, I want to have a look at the tanks. There is a, since they swapped out the tanks, there's always this smell of fuel around the bike. Never was like that. Now when you approach it from two meters away, you smell what kind of fuel I have, either BP, Caltex, engine. Something's not right here. Either the breather pipe is leaking out or maybe this thing is leaking because it's always got a lot of dirt caked around it. Maybe that's where fluid is leaking out. Maybe it's in that O-ring. Who knows? And while I'm doing that, I'm going to change her oil. Because that's kind of yucky. And that is oil that was changed just, I would say, 5,300 kilometers ago. Yeah, it looks that bad. Yuck. What else? Oh, 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 and I need to change the chain and sprockets as well. Yeah, but that's only at 20,000. She's only got 17,200 left at the moment. So, another DIY project. For those of you who ask, why don't you just take them to the dealer? I don't have faith in the local dealer, all right? Since the last service where they forgot to connect my rear brake, uh -uh, I'd rather do it myself. And of course, I need to add a bit of rust converter where all the paint scraped off. Yeah, this one I'll discard. So yeah, a bit of DIY. And if you own a motorcycle, if you don't wrench on your own bike, you're missing out. It's plain and simple. And there we go, final prototype. I took the original, shortened it, because most of the dirt was already being extracted round here. Further down the funnel it was absolutely clean. And then I made a second one, a bit more generous in diameter. There we go, that's it. You don't even need to do the whole cone thing, like the unifilter. How do you make these? You get yourself some material, you do some piss poor stitching, <laughs> if you're me. And you just add contact glue, uh, Patex, to make sure the stuff doesn't come apart. So if there's too much suction, the stitching will hold and the glue will hold. So, should work. So, these things are going to go back into the 1190. And when she hits 30,000 kilometers, I'll inspect them again. So she's got about 12,000 kilometers until then. Let's see how these things fare up. But, already. Major improvement over the Unifilter snorkel socks, and a lot cheaper.